can go ahead and get logged into uh, the Affinity system. Okay. All right. So to begin, I'm currently logged in right now um, with my club admin role. When you first come into the Affinity platform, you will see uh, your first and last name in your club here at the top. You'll also have this uh, drop down. If you click on the drop down, you'll be able to see the seasons. So right now, I'm currently logged into the fall 2017, uh, 2018 season. Okay, the first part of the training session, we're gonna go through um, an admin lookup and a couple of other features that are available for administrators um, or for your adults. So we're gonna click on player slash admin, and then we're gonna click on admin lookup. Okay. When you are in administrator lookup, one thing you're gonna notice is going to be the page size up at the top. The page size automatically defaults to 50, okay? Um, our suggestion is gonna be that you go ahead and expand the page size to the number of adults that you currently have in your club, okay? So that way you, you can kinda of see all of them instead of having to click on the next page. You also have this reset button. What this reset button does is it defaults everything back uh, to their default status. So um, if you had any play types you were searching by, any filtered statuses or anything like that, um, it will automatically default to all versus what you currently have in the system, okay? When you do click on the reset tab, this report section that you see here is gonna disappear. Okay, the only way to pull reports under the administrator lookup page is when you actually have searched for adults in the database. Okay, so the other thing is you have your uh, play type section, you have your uh, select admin types, certifications, uh, status filters, the risk filter by. So we have the different risk filters or your query uh, statuses that you can actually sort. Okay, so you can search for approved, you can search for a conditional query resubmit and so forth, okay? Um, you also have the application date, so you can sort by when the application was created. And then we just recently added this risk expiration date filter. This allows you to search by expiration date, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on search. And we're gonna see that I have nine adults listed. Okay, the nine adults that are listed here um, have current applications for my program in the fall 2017, spring 2018 season. The reason that it's searching the 2017, 18 season is because my season dropdown is, is at selected season. Okay. If you click on that dropdown, you'll see the all seasons search. What this does, it gives you the ability to search for adults that had an application in your club in previous seasons. Okay, so if you have an, admin, an adult who has an application in, let's say, in the 16-17 season, um, you can search for them here under all seasons send them an email and see if they were gonna register to the upcoming season, okay? So um, now that we've looked at all of the different um, filters that you guys can sort by, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on um, one of our administrators. Before we move on though, I want to cover here the risk status that you have here and then the expiration date. So you click on any of the filters here at the top, anything that you see displayed here is something that you can sort by. So for instance, right now I am sorting by risk expiration date. If I click on risk status, I will be sorting by my risk status. So you'll notice now that my grouping has all my approved together, conditional, expired, and so forth. This gives us the ability to email as well. And you can email all of them or you can use your risk filter uh, by and then sort by those 
and then you send those emails from there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click on do a many. Okay, perfect. So uh, right now, we've gone through the administrator lookup. We've looked at all the filters. So now we've seen the adult, and now we've pulled up our adult record. So what do we do next? Um, now we have to go ahead and make sure that our adult that we are looking at has everything they need for uh, their, their quarry, right, that they have everything that they need. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to uh, Mary, who's going to talk about the um, administrator tab and some of the things that we need to search for uh, for the quarry acknowledgement form. All right, thank you, Diana, and again, thank you all for joining us. So now that we're in the adult registration account, I'd like to go over the uh, Cori Verified box. It's located under your adult member's photo. So prior to checking the Cori Verified box, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts requires that the Cori submitter collect the Cori Acknowledgement Form from the adult member via a face-to-face -face meeting and verify the information on the form using a government ID. So once you've met with your adult member, verify that all the information is correct, you sign the form, check the Query Verified box, and shred the form. Now we're going to look at, um, we're going to go over the information that's on the Query Acknowledgement form and where it's located in the Affinity ShareView system. So first we have the adult's legal first and last name. Now, if there's any issues with the first and last name, like say uh, the first name was Tom and it's, you check the ID, the driver's license, and it should have been Thomas, you would send the Cory administrator at the Massachusetts Youth Soccer Office the adult's first and last name, their ID number, and the correct information. So don't check the Cory Verify box unless the, the information is correct. And the Cori administrator would then update the information and send you an email. Once you receive the email back from us, um, if all the other information is correct, you can go ahead and check the box and shred the document. So next, we have the adult's address. If the adult has moved and has a new address, you can go ahead and update his current address in the registration system and send his previous address to the Mass Youth Soccer Corps Administrator or call Affinity. Um, we have access to the additional information tab that you see on top, and that's where we can add a previous address to the registration account. So just for your information, the additional information tab also helps with some of the other information that we use to process the adult quarry. Okay, we'll move down to the adults driver's license information. If this needs to be corrected, um, you can email the adult and have them log into their registration account and update the information. They can do that by clicking on the detail tab, the details tab that's located under their photo, and then they should email you once that update is done. Okay, next is the date of birth. Again, if the date of birth is incorrect, please email the adult's name and ID number along with the correct information to the Mass Youth Soccer Quarry Administrator so they can update the registration and process a new quarry on that adult. Once the Quarry Administrator updates the information, they'll email you. And if all the information you see is correct, you're then required to check the Quarry Verified box and shred the document. Um, now a little information about credentials. So if you take a look next to the date of birth, you'll see the risk status and risk expire date. Prior to printing the adult's credential, please make sure the adult's approved for the entire year. This year is the fall 2017, spring 2018 year, so you would make sure the adult quarry does not expire prior to July 31st, 2018, and next year it would be July 31st, 2019. If they're not clear through the full soccer year, please send them an email, let them know that they need to complete the adult quarry registration, as um, that's what will trigger a new quarry request for them. Also, prior to printing the adult credential, 
make sure the photo is a clear headshot photo of the adult. Okay, if the photo needs to be deleted, you can put down the photo, press the delete button, and then email the adult letting them know that they need to upload a new photo. And then you can see the edit button there too. So if, if you need to edit the photo, you can click the edit button. This will allow you to resize, crop, or rotate. A lot of people put the photos up sideways, so you can rotate the photo. Um, so prior to printing the credentials, please make sure those two things are looked at. And then keep in mind with credentials, um, they won't print if the adult does not have a photo in the registration account, nor if their risk status is not either approved, conditional, or under 18 approved. So in the ID section, when you see the red risk management failure, it's probably because the adult's risk status is either pending, query resubmit, or under review, or suspended. So um, check their risk status once you see that red risk management failure, and that will let you know what's going on with their account. All right, back to you, Diana. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mary. Um, since Mary was already talking about the, um, the credentials, we'll go ahead and go into credentials real quick since this is the button that you see here. Um, when you are printing the credentials for your adult, please remember to use the ID card section um, located on the left-hand side here um, versus using the print ID card that you see here on the adult record. Um, the reason being for that is that um, this print ID card button that you see will not print um, co conditional risk statuses. So as Mary was saying, that there's certain they have to be in certain statuses in order to have the, the actual credential be printed. So this button here will only print out if they have an approved status. Um, the other thing is that this button is not connected to the print ID card section. What that means is that if you go in and you print out a credential through the adult record, and then you go back in and you print it, you, you go into the ID card section and you search for adults without that have not printed the credential, um, this adult will actually show up again because they're not tied together. The system will not recognize that you already printed the credential for this adult, okay? Um, the next thing about this ID card is that it actually will populate the based on the last registration in the system for the adult. So let's go ahead and let's go up to the Applications tab. In the Applications tab, we will be able to see the, the actual registrations that this adult has. So for instance, if you were to come in here and you were to try to print a credential, but the latest application that they have or the, the latest registration that they have is not for your club specifically, the credential is not going to print with your club, the credential is going to print with the other club's name on it. Um, so the ID card section, which we will cover next, will actually give you the ability to print the credential with the correct club, which is yours, okay? When you are in the Applications tab, you'll also notice um, the different sections. We have the club, we have the type on here and says AD, which means it's an administrator. You also have uh, the season, which is the season in which they have the registration for. You also have uh, the play level, that you also have the date that it was created, and then the last update date. So the last update date will actually update if the adult goes in and makes changes through the adult query registration, okay? Um, and then you also have status. So under the status, one thing I wanna point out is that this status is not tied to anything with the query registration, okay? The status that you see here is all status of pending um, team placement. So the status is based on team placement. So for instance, um, we see here we have the adult query registration. We see here that this status for this particular registration is impending status. What that means is that this registration is not tied to a team at the moment. 
because you guys are not necessarily putting adults in teams in the affinity platform, the, most of your statuses in your adults are going to say pending. Okay. The other status that you'll probably see is canceled. What that means is that the registration was created at some point and then it was later on canceled. Maybe they decided that they no longer wanted to coach for that season or so forth. So then you would see the canceled. Um, when you see it as assigned, that means that this adult has been assigned to a team and deactivated basically means that the, at a, the adult is on an activated team, okay? You also see here the ELA, view ELA log. If you click on the view ELA log for the adult Corey registration, you will be able to see the ELAs that they were signed during the registration process. So you'll be able to see the uh, document title, the name of the person who signed it and their initials, and also the date and time in which they signed it. Okay. Keeping in mind uh, that we are going to be migrating over all adults um, so that way they don't have to go back in and register. The next piece we want to cover is canceling applications. So since the adults are going to, the adult registrations are going to be migrated from the fall 17, spring 18 season over to the new fall 2018, spring 2019 season, you're probably going to have some adults that are no longer going to be coaching with you in the new season. So we want to make sure that you guys go in and you cancel any applications uh, or any registrations for adults that are not going to be coaching with you in the following season. Keeping in mind that all regist adult registrations are for a year, not for per season. So therefore, we want to make sure that we are not canceling any registrations for any adults that will or have volunteered or will coach in our organization during the, the soccer seasonal year of the fall, let's say the fall 2018, spring 2019 season. Okay. Right. And Diane, the other thing, yes, that we, you know, we did migrate this year. So there are some in here, adults that um, have not volunteered for the entire soccer year, fall 2017, spring 2018. And so we're asking our members for this year to go in and cancel applications. Again, it's for any adult that, that has not and will not be participating with your organization for the current soccer year. We're asking that be done by April 1st. So you'd follow the fall 2017, spring 2018 line for your organization only and click the cancel button if they didn't volunteer or coach with your organization this year at all. Thanks. Correct. So um, that's actually the button I was about, the tab I was actually about to hit next. So when you're canceling the um, applications, we want to make sure that because you are having access to multiple clubs applications, when you're looking at it for this particular adult, you want to make sure that you are canceling it, um, canceling the, the registration only for your club. So for instance, here we see Affinity Sports Demo and then we also see um, adult quarry registration. Both of these have a cancel button, which allows us to cancel the application. Um, so if I want to go ahead and cancel for Affinity Sports Demo, I go ahead and just click on cancel. It's going to ask me if I want to delete the application. I'm going to say yes, I want to go ahead and cancel my registration. The system will then update the status to canceled, okay? You'll notice here for assigned, activated, um, you don't see the cancel button. An adult or any type of register for a registration will not be able to have an application canceled if they are in uh, if they are rostered on a team. So if they're rostered on a team, you will not see the cancel button. So the only time you will see that cancel button is if you if your adult is on a pending application. Okay, and as Mary stated, they are asking that for the fall 2017, spring 2018 
season um, that all applications or registrations for adults are canceled by April 1st. So when you're canceling those applications, just remember to come into the Applications tab, search for your club only, and then click on the Cancel button for those adults who did not or will not be coaching in the fall 2017, spring 2018 season. Okay. When you're in here as well, you'll also see um, at, up on the upper right-hand side, you have previous admin and next admin. If we go ahead and click on the next administrator, it will take us over to the applications tab of the next administrator uh, down the line from the admin lookup. So basically, it's looking at the admin lookup and just taking us through every single admin when we click on previous or next. Okay, when we're in the next, we want to make sure that we just do the, the photo verify, the risk status, and we do the same steps that we did for the previous adult. Okay, now once we've gone in and we've verified everything, we've checked the, we've checked the box, everything is good for the um, quarry, then we want to go ahead and print our credentials. We can go ahead and click on the ID card. Under the ID card section, you're going to notice, again, you have multiple filters that you can sort by. You have uh, the page size that you can search by. You can reset just like you had in Administrator Lookup. You want to go ahead and search for print status not printed. You go ahead and just click search. And then all adults that are eligible to have a credential printed will appear uh, below. Okay, so we want to change our um, card type to administrator because as you can see, when I don't select anything and I click all, we also get players, so we want to go ahead and click administrator and then do a search so we can get just the administrators. Okay, when we're in this area here, we'll notice that, you know, we have a checkbox, so that means that this adult, Diana, can have her, uh, her adult credential printed. So we'll go ahead and click print admin credential. And then we're going to get a pop-up. Okay. And here is my card. And it always wants to set that. The next thing is going to ask you if did ID cards print correctly. You're going to say yes or no. Um, you want to make sure that you go ahead and mark them yes. If you mark them no, the system will not count the credential as printed. So every single time that you go into not printed, that adult is going to continue to come up. So we want to make sure that you are clicking did ID cards print correctly and you're going to say yes. Okay, and when we, again, let's go ahead and say no. Make sure that when you're printing your card, you're selecting your, your state, your club, and your program to ensure that your, your program or your club shows prints out in your admin credentials. Okay. The next thing after this is the report section. So you have your reports on the left-hand side. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. There are multiple reports that you can utilize in the Affinity platform. I'm going to point out some of the most popular um, reports that um, are more beneficial uh, to you. So the first report we want to pull is the count, the counts report. It's called the admin count with risk status. So to pull that report, you will click on the reports on the left-hand side. Under registration, you are going to see counts reports. You're going to click on counts report. You'll be able to select, search by your club and your program. And then you're going to click on report type. Okay. There's our admin count with risk status report. And then you're going to click on generate report. What that's going to do, it's going to open up another browser with the actual report, okay? Once you're here, 
you have to export it into um, Excel, okay? So you need to export it into Excel. So what we do is we go select a format, and then you have a couple options when you want to export it into Excel. And the reason you want to export it into Excel is because it gives you the ability to uh, filter, to remove certain columns, and so forth. So you have two different report types that you can pull. You can pull the comma de delimited. And when we click on that one, what it does, it basically is just the data only, okay? You can expand the width to actually see the uh, data. So this is what it looks like when you're looking at the, C, the uh, CSV comma delimited file, okay? If you click on Excel and you export into Excel, um, what it actually does is it will keep the same format that you saw when you were actually previewing the report. When it first pulls up, this is exactly the way that it will look. So you want to go ahead and click on the plus sign so that way you can see the information. Okay. Um, when we have this up, you want to make sure that prior to sending it out or sharing this, if, this report with anybody that you remove the date of birth column here. Okay. So you can click on the H, you can right click, and then you can click on delete. Okay. Once you've taken off the date of birth, you're welcome to share this document um, with whoever needs to see this. The other report uh, that I want to show you is located under player slash admin and administrator lookup. Okay. Up on the right hand side you have the report drop down that I touched a little bit before. And then you have the team admin detail with all fields. When you click on this report, it basically gives you all of the information for the adult. Okay. Um, at that point, again, you go ahead and export it, and you can remove the additional rows or columns that you don't need. Okay. When you're submitting um, player uploads, we're going to touch just a little bit on player uploads um, at the moment. When you guys are submitting uh, the player uploads, you would go into player slash admin, and you have here the click here to read um, upload instructions. This basically gives you all the instructions on what, where you're going to find the affinity information so you can put it in your Excel document. To pull the template, you're going to click here to da uh, download upload template Excel file. And you're going to click on open. Okay. All of the columns that you see here in red are required. Okay, these are all required fields. So if I look at the season ID, SID code, and season, these three fields here are fields that you are only going to find in the Affinity platform. Okay, so the instructions that I touched on a little while ago will explain where you actually will go to locate those fields that are required. Okay. Also, we have uh, your player last name, first name. We want to make sure that you are giving us your legal first, the legal first and the legal last name for the player. We're also asking for the gender, so whether um, it's a fem uh, female or a male, girl or boy. You have the data first. And then the play level code. The play level code is also located in the affinity system. And then you have the address information. And then when we are uploading a player, we always require that we at least have one parent attached to the player. Starting the new fall season, it is going to be required that you have at least one email address in this player upload, okay? Now, let's say you filled out all of this information 
and you are ready to submit the upload to Affinity so we can go ahead and put it in the system. When you are saving this file into your, into your desktop or to your documents, we want to make sure that the naming convention of the file has your club name, your upload type, which is player, and then the date you submitted the file. Okay, so club name, upload type, player, and the date that it was submitted. Once you've saved that, you can now go ahead and submit that Excel file for upload to Affinity. You do so by clicking on the Submit Player Upload Request, which will take you to our new Help Center. Once you're in our new Help Center, we, you will be able to click on Submit a Request or Sign In. My suggestion to you guys is that you click on Sign In. And if you don't already have an account in our Help Center, that you go ahead and say new to Massachusetts and you click sign up. What this does, it allows you to sign in when you're creating tickets to Affinity and it allows you to go back in once you sign in and view all the tickets that you've submitted. So you can go back in and look at all of the uploads that you've submitted, you can look at all of the help tickets you've submitted and so forth. So, and then once you're in your account, you can submit new requests and it pre-populates the information that it's already collected during the sign-up process. So once you're in here, you can either submit a ticket, a request, or create an account to make it a little bit easier for you when you're submitting either tickets or um, uploads to be uploaded. Okay. Um, Mary, do you have it? Mary Relic, do you have anything you need to add or that you'd like to add before we open up for questions? No, I think we can um, find out if anybody has questions now. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, I know that we've covered um, just quite a bit of different areas. Do you guys have any questions? I have a question. Okay. My question uh, is about canceling um, an adult registration. Usually, there, do you have to cancel two of them? One is a quarry and one is the regular registration. Do you just cancel the regular registration and leave the quarry, or do you cancel the quarry as well if they're not participating? Let's say they, they participated in the fall but are not participating in the spring. Okay. Well, you want to go it's... ahead and just... Mary, do you want me to answer or do you want to answer that? Well, you know what, I want to answer that only because if they okay. participated in the fall, you need to leave them in there because our soccer year is fall to spring. So if they didn't participate at all during the whole year, so fall 2017, spring 2018, then you would just cancel the application to your organization. You would leave the um, adult quarry registration line. Okay, it's only, okay. You know, we're only asking that you cancel the registration to your organization, but please don't cancel for anybody who has participated in the fall. Yes, okay, okay that's what I actually meant, but yes, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I have a um, Go ahead. Yeah, um, um, what do we do or do we do anything if, let's say, their contact information changes, whether you hear that a coach got a new cell phone or that they moved to a different address, whether it's in the same town or a different town, are we required to go in and update that, or are, are they even required to go in and update their information, or do they have to submit a new adult registration or quarry or anything like that? Do, do we have any responsibility to update that, that contact information? Um, no, we we don't have that anywhere written down that we are we would require that. We would ask though that if you know that the adult has moved, to please get that information and update it. We really would like the the most current information for them, and you know along with email addresses, if um, that's changed, the adult themselves could go in and update it, or you know you can or I can. 
um, it's always best to keep the information current, and we would like to keep previous addresses in the system also, but we, we don't have that mandated that you have to do that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I do have another question, so if there's another, not another one, but I can wait. No, go ahead. Thank you. Sure. So, um, so my next question is, is: Let's say it's something a little bit more serious, um, because it's you know they they fill out their core their quarry, I should say, and they um, you know they do their adult registration requirement, and then sometime during the year the year you overhear something or you have uh, an idea that they have been arrested or accused of something, and do we have the obligation to make them submit another quarry? Um, do, do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, maybe it's a, as, as minimal as a, you know, if it's a minor traffic violation, I, I'm sure we wouldn't worry about it, but if it's something we think might be more serious, do we, or should we be able to go in there and cancel their quarry or require them to? Is there an issue of privacy in their defense that until they're proven guilty in a court of law, we shouldn't do anything? Um, well, we would okay. Sorry, I did not mean to butt in. Um, so you you shouldn't cancel their quarry registration line. What you should do is contact the Corey administrator at the Mass Youth Soccer Office, which is me at the moment. So you, you would contact me, and we can go over that. But if you if you hear something and it, you you believe it's serious, um, by all means, you should contact the Massachusetts Youth Soccer Association State Office um, Corey administrator, and we can go over what we can do about that. Okay, does that answer it completely? I think so. I mean, I'm sure it's basically using common sense, and at the same time, we want to, um, you know, balance the privacy of, of the person who could be accused of something, or, 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 you know, again, try to divide what's hearsay and what's, you know, <laughs> in the courts, perhaps. Um, I do have one more uh, question. Um, if there's no other questions stacking up, uh, it's a little bit lighter. <laughs> um, Go ahead. It actually, uh, it actually has to do with. Um, Possibly uh, underage volunteers, or uh, let's say an 18-year-old who wants to coach a referee, or someone who's under 18 who wants to coach or referee, and assuming your league allows it, or or, or what have you, uh, what are they required to do? They, do they need to? Uh, it sounds like a quarry is for 18 and older, but do they need to do? Obviously, they're not an adult, so they wouldn't do adult registration. Would they be considered admins, though? Okay, so for the under 18, we do have an under 18 approved risk status. Okay, and if, so if an under 18 wants to coach volunteers, you need to first verify with your league if they need to have a credential. Um, and if they, if they need a credential or you would like them registered in the system, there's two ways to register them. If they're a player, it's a little more difficult. We have to do that for them. But if they are not a player, and they're under 18, they can go through the registration system, contact me, and I can um, update their risk status to show the under 18 approved so we can print credentials. Okay? But we, we, you know, we do recommend that when you have um, somebody of the age 16 to, um, to under 18, so 16, 17, that can go through a coaching course, that they take an F license, uh, something that um, will help them learn how to run a safe practice, and that's always a good idea. So they can they can be registered in the system. And again, players would contact us. And um, if they're not a player but they're under 18, they can go ahead and through the registration portal and then notify us when they're registered, and we can give them the under 18 approval. And the the Corey risk status will expire on their 18th birthday, and the Corey will not be ran on that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, any other additional questions? I had just one uh, okay. on the on the existing applications that are showing on the screen now. Is there any correlation between uh, the admins that we leave in there and the billing that goes on? Yes, we're we're going to cross check affinity with the um, fee submission forms, and that's okay. why we're asking that 
any members that, of your organization that did not volunteer any time during the year, you cancel their applications so that the fee submission form matches the affinity count. Okay. Okay. That needs to be done by April 1st. Yes, that's when, when we would like it done, yes. And if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to reach out to me. I will gladly um, help you out. So I have one quick question. What if you cancel somebody's registration, so will they have to go back in and re-register? Like if you think they're, you know, if they didn't coach in the fall, really not sure about whether they're going to coach in the spring, should you go through and cancel their registration if they're not registered right now? You know, if they didn't coach in the fall, uh -huh. right? So, go so through and cancel if they're not registered to coach for the spring, but you know, at the last minute, you need more coaches and they register, they have to go back in and just, if I cancel their registration, they have to go back there and re-register. Right. So you can wait till, right. You can wait till April 1st. And if, if, if you do cancel their application to your organization, their information stays in the system. So the only thing they're doing is going through the adult um, Corey registration portal and updating anything that needs to be updated. It's it's like a minute, two minute process for them at that point because the information is still in there. So if you do cancel one and they want to volunteer, it takes them just a couple minutes, their information is still in there. Um, and, you, and you can wait until April 1st to, to cancel too, or until March 31st. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a question. Okay, okay go ahead. All right, I just want to make sure um, I was being heard. Um, <laughs> have um, uh, an issue with the um, April 1st deadline. I mean, it may be okay for travel, but for our in-town, um, we're not um, starting our in-town program until the following weekend, and it's most likely we're still going to be twisting arms to get coaches um, after April 1st. So what what does that right. mean? So, so what I would do there is um you know we like I said we're we're asking that it be done by April 1st and we understand that not everything is set for everybody by that time. So okay. You know I I'm sure it's not like really convenient but you could you know shoot shoot me a quick email letting me know you're still in the process. We'll hold on you know, uh, before we reconcile your organization. Um, and, you know, so it, and it's all um, fixable. You know, we, we can adjust where we need to, so you don't feel that you have to get everybody out. Um, if there's okay. any issues, somebody will contact you, and we can go over what the difference is. Okay? okay. And, again, if you need any help, just reach out to me. Okay. I know in the past um, we had been able to submit you know, like player uploads, well, and adults, um, multiple times. Um, mm -hmm. Is it helpful if I perhaps submitted all my travel adults, um, coaches, in one batch and then did all the intramural in another batch? Or is that more confusing for you? Um, so you're you're talking about the coaches? Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, because well, and the players, too. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess you don't really care about the players at this point, but I was thinking about the player uploads. Um, you know, we'll probably have kids still registering through mid-April for our intramural program. Right. Um, so it stays the same. There still is the, you know, the initial registration due date. Right. And then... Uh, a secondary one, so you you can okay. keep doing that where you don't need to separate files. You know whatever's been working, and that is that is something that you might want to reach out to Rachel because she does the player um, portion. But if you've been doing it one way, you can stick to it all. When you do the supplement um, upload and the supplement fee submission form, I do know that we ask that you only include the new players and yeah, new adults right. like us informing players on that they upload file um yeah so don't i don't i don't think you need to worry you can still upload yeah. late you know your second batch 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, Are there I, any um uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, you may not be able to answer it, but um, several times, uh, actually more often than you might think, um, I have a lot of folks who either coach other sports or because of their job, they're either a police officer, a teacher, or a nurse, or what have you, that they already filled out a quarry probably the week before or in that year or several times a year, and, you know, they roll their eyes and like, oh, i got to do this again. Is there any way to sort of integrate that or to connect with what the state has so that if they've already submitted a quarry recently at least or within the year that they require this step, or is that not possible? Um, quarries are they're specific to the organization. So every it's the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts law that your organization run a quarry on the person that they're going to use to volunteer or hire, whatever the case may be, but it's specific to that organization because the quarry information is, is left up to interpretation. So, I mean, I know schools are and police officers, that's, that's a very strict guideline they would have for letting somebody uh, work with them, but but they are specific to an organization, so I cannot see that connecting. And we do have a meeting with the um, Department of Criminal Justice coming up, so it's something we can ask them if there's any type of connect connectivity um, for that. But it, as far as I know at this point, no, we have to run our own, um, our own quarries. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I have one more little small question. Um, it has to do with, uh, you know, our, our soccer league that we're in uh, is requiring a concussion course requirement. Um, and we may at some point add additional requirements that we would love to have sort of rolled into the adult verification system. Is there a way to customize um, the affinity tool so that when when they're considered approved, we also have other either other check boxes or an, um or or you know is is that possible even to sort of um reject or approve someone based on some customization whether they've passed or, or furnished proof that they've you know passed a concussion course or a first aid course or something or a CPR course if whatever requirement we decide to throw at them. Diana, that that would be you for the system i i don't know that i don't believe there is such a thing um right now yes so um the way that it works is like if if let's say um you know there's a there's something you guys want to implement as far as like a concussion awareness i know that there's a lot of like you know the sexual awareness i think it's called is coming up soon too you know there's a yeah. lot of different um things that are going to be coming up you know, as long as Massachusetts wants to implement those, we can definitely put those in the system. Um, we do have other, you know, state associations that are currently using our system to keep track of those type of stuff. Um, like you said, you know, you, to kind of have it all in one centralized location. Um, it's a conversation that, that we can have, I can have with Mary and Mike Borslow and, and see if that's something that they want to go forward with. Usually when it comes to that type of modification, it's usually across the whole board is not just specifically for um, a club. It's usually implemented for the entire state. So um, it's going to need a lot more conversation. Um, but definitely, Mary, I mean, we should definitely have a conversation on it if that's um, the route that your membership wants to go on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's fair enough. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. OK. Um, are there any other any other questions? Okay. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any other questions. Um, like we stated earlier, when I like I stated earlier, um, this call was uh, recorded. The webinar was recorded, so we will be sharing the link to that um, webinar and to this webinar, so you guys always have it for future reference. And um, we just thank you for taking the time out of your busy evenings to spend time with us for an hour and just kind of go through some of the the things that you guys needed to know for the adult, for the adults, and for the player uploads. 
Mary, do you have any final things you want to say? Um, if anybody does have any questions, any concerns, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address and phone number are on the website, and um, I'd be happy to uh, to help anyone out, answer any questions, or find out who can answer your questions. So thank you all. I really appreciate your time. Hmm? Thank you guys for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Oh, good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.